How did Aiden Ross go from being a random kid playing video games to hanging out with some of the most famous celebrities and even signing the biggest streaming deal ever? His rise has been spectacular. In only 5 years, Aiden has become one of the largest streamers of our era. But as we all know, fame comes at a cost. And in Aiden's case, it was his own humanity. When you pair the wealth and fame of a superstar with the immaturity of a teenager, you get a man who anyone can and will take advantage of. Playboy Carty, Nick Fuentes and Andrew Tate are only a few names out of the many who have used Aiden Ross for their personal gain. In the process, not only did they exploit Aiden's success, but they also changed Aiden as a person. And in the end, what used to be a genuinely decent person was transformed into someone who doesn't realize the meaning of what he says or the consequences of what he does. How did Aiden become a multimillionaire from a platform where thousands struggle to even monetize? Why does it feel like all of his friends are only there to take advantage of him? And most of all, is there any hope left for Aiden's sanity? In October of 2018, a young boy who would soon become a streaming icon started streaming on Twitch for the very first time. Despite not seeing any success, his dedication was unmatched, with some of his earliest streams lasting more than 10 hours. The first spark of Aiden's eventual success was shown when he started playing NBA 2K with Bronny James, commonly known as the son of the basketball legend Lebron James. By leveraging this friendship, Aiden managed to get on a call with Lebron James himself, and you can imagine what kind of growth that would cause to a streamer playing basketball games. LeBron. He said, is this LeBron? <laughs> Yo! Upon posting about it on Twitter, Aiden's following catapulted to nearly double its original size. The game was on. With this new wave of attention, Aiden didn't fail to deliver. He continued streaming with the same, if not greater energy for even longer. On top of that, it looked like another growth opportunity was lying ahead with the release of NBA 2K21 coming soon. Unfortunately for him though, the game was a disaster. The developers failed to deliver on the expectations and it looked like the game would die soon. Still Aiden somehow managed to turn this potential failure into a success because after he tweeted out a statement with hashtag make 2K fun again, the hashtag soon got to number one trending on Twitter. However, even with this moment of attention, his viewers were slowly decreasing. Soon enough, Aiden realized that if he wanted a larger audience, he would have to branch out into more general topics than just gaming. And so, the era of live e-dates came to be. These streams featured a bunch of Aiden's friends and at least one attractive woman. The friends would compete against each other and try to impress the woman, and in the process create some of the cringiest and simultaneously funniest moments in Aiden's career. Because these moments could easily be cut from clips with just enough context to make them funny but not enough to satisfy the viewers, anyone who watched a few isolated clips would feel compelled to watch the entire stream as a VOD or even live. And since Aiden made sure to post these clips wherever he could, he once again started seeing vast success. Success. With his newfound fame, he got in touch with fellow successful creator Ricegum. In this whole process, he pretty much tripled his audience size. However, unlike last time, he wouldn't slow down. Due to his recent fame, Aiden got invited to the classic hot top stream with Corinna Koff. How about me and Julia kiss, uh, kiss Aiden on the cheek and then I get, I'll give Aiden another kiss? A stream that peaked at 91,000 live viewers and was number one trending in the United States. By 2020, he was hanging out with the well-known content team face clan. However, Aiden knew better than to get complacent, because even his new format would soon die out. Time and time again, we've seen creators fall for the reason that they failed to innovate. On the other hand, Aiden knew that he had to pivot if he wished to not only maintain his viewership but grow it. Despite the fact that this new thing would eventually lead to around 100,000 live viewers per stream, in hindsight the decision might not have been the best. On one fateful day, Aiden started a live stream on rapper T Grizzly's invite-only GTA server. This was meant to be the first step towards his entry into the rap industry. With the connections he made, he started inviting insanely popular rappers to his stream. Lil Yadi, Lil Uzi Vert, Polo G, Blueface, Tory Lanez, Travis Scott and many more. The idea was simple. They would get to promote their songs and Aiden would get a free entry into the rap community. 
or so he thought. Despite being around 20 years of age, Aiden's maturity was that of a teenager. And to his dismay, it turns out that bribing people with fame and money isn't the optimal way to attain respect, especially when you have had no prior connection to them. Couple this with Aiden's humor and the fact that he wasn't really knowledgeable about the culture of rap to get to a figure who always acts childish around everyone he meets, which is a supreme problem considering the highly controversial people he platforms. Because of this, Aiden constantly found himself in controversy after controversy with pretty much every rapper he streamed with. And since Aiden was intimidated by these rappers, it was all too common to see apology videos to everyone he offended. Yo, Paul, I, I, I'm sorry, bro. I, I'm sincerely apologizing. Hey, Kentro, how you doing? So look, man, I, I'm gonna just let you know I, I'm not on any type of gang violence shit at all. No, I, I own no weapon machinery. I have no sorts of, you know, gang blood in me. I was listening to a song that obviously I had no idea like who you were, like who, you know, who like it was talking about in the song. So I wanna apologize to you, you know? Um, yeah. I meant no disrespect at all, Brody. So I'm, I'm really sorry about that. On one occasion, Aiden claimed to have paid Playboy Carty $2 million to stream with him, only for him to leave almost immediately after receiving the cash. Back to the studio. You leave right now? Yeah. Alright, hold on, let me real quick. It's clear that most of these rappers see him as a quick cash grab and nothing else. Almost no one in the hip hop community treats him with respect, and it seems everyone realizes that except for Aiden Ross. Hip hop wasn't the only pitfall for Aiden though. On another side, he also got into a major controversy for promoting a crypto scam coin called MILF token. Although something was off, when Aiden was doing the promotion for it, he showed that he didn't know how to buy the coin in the first place. Yeah, but again, chat, I'm not a financial advisor, so. Uh, what does the blue crown do if you guys got the but uh yeah let me uh let me go ahead and buy let me buy a milf real quick i want to buy one um he spends the next like 15 to 30 minutes trying to figure out how Uniswap works. This alone wouldn't mean much, but when he was confronted by h3 and Hassan for it he once again showed that he was clueless of how this works. That you're new to the game. <laughs> No, game. yeah, and I know, and I, and I already know you, you, you probably hate me based off of like what happened with the whole MILF token and stuff, but I just want to let you know I didn't put any of my own money in, and obviously, man, like, if I could take it back, I would. Claiming that the coin wasn't a scam, owning to the fact that it decreased in price, which obviously has nothing to do with it being a scam. You saw that after that shit, it went down. So listen, it was not a scam of pumping up nothing. That's the reason it wasn't a scam, guys, because the price went down after he promoted it. Although this would normally be viewed as a streamer desperately trying to find a scapegoat, in Aiden's case, it seemed strangely genuine. It almost looked like he truly believed that it wasn't a scam and that no one was hurt by it. He just saw a quick cash grab and did it because he thought there would be no consequences. For the same reason, he soon started doing paid promotions for crypto gambling sites. However, once again, the growth curve was going down. Aiden's viewership was on a decline by late 2021, having dropped from around 100,000 to around 30 and 40,000 viewers per stream. All the unhealthy amount of controversies and soulless streaming was also getting to him, as he expressed that he felt lost and devoid of purpose. I, I just got tired of doing all these collaborations. I'm currently looking to get out of LA and I kind of just want to live my life and be happy. LA is very training and very toxic and I don't want to be here and I don't want to rely on other people, you know, to help me make, make and better my content. Collaborations are cool and necessary to do, but I want to just do things on my own. I want to have my own path, my own legacy, and people know me for my own stuff. I'm looking for advice. I'm lost. I'm lost. Um, I just have no motivation. He needed someone to guide him, to pull him out of the mud, and to show him how to get his life together. In July of 2022, with a singular stream, Aiden Ross made history by bringing Andrew Tate in front of his audience. At this time, the presence of Tate was inescapable. Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, or literally anywhere else. He was at the center of attention. Yet, despite being the most searched man in the world, he was shrouded in complete mystery. Due to his controversial presence, most people hesitated to give him a platform. Aiden, on the other hand, was both desperate and eager. Desperate to regain his audience and eager to meet Andrew Tate. Because for the same reason that Tate's words resonated with men all over the world, they were also resonating with Aiden Ross. Tate became a daily guest on Aiden's streams. And the views? 
went to new all-time highs. Hayden was now consistently ranking among the top three streamers on Twitch. He hosted live debates between Andrew and other popular personalities like XQC, Kai Sennett, Hassan Abbey and many more, reaching view counts that are frankly absurd. And while Tate was using this opportunity to promote his own brand, Aiden was genuinely falling in love with this persona. Slowly but surely, Aiden was falling for the charm of Andrew Tate. After a push-up challenge, he even shaved off his hair to imitate Tate. From the very first conversation, their chemistry was undeniable. Truth be told, despite the fact that Andrew's intentions were not clear, he also gave some genuine advice. When I tell people that you are the sum of the five people you spend the most time with, everyone agrees. They go, yeah, that's probably true. The people, the five people you spend the most time with, that's what you're gonna end up like. They say, yeah, that's true. And then they continue to hang around with people who they don't wanna be. Why? You had, there has to be a point. There has to be a point where you sit and go, okay, you're my friends, et cetera, et cetera. I love you guys. Yeah, we can talk, whatever. But I'm on a different life path. You have to leave some people behind. And he also said this. I'm trying to hide from the police. I, I don't I don't like making accounts online and stuff. John Law and the government. Wait, hide from you know, the police. I, I, from what? Just in general. A foreshadowing of what was to come. Since on the December of 2022, Andrew Tate, the man that had given hope to Aiden by skyrocketing his viewers and motivating him to continue streaming, was arrested by the Romanian police under suspicion of abuse and sex trafficking. It was here that the impact of Tate was apparent. Because despite encountering actual evidence of Tate himself confirming that he made women work for his webcam business, Aiden refused to admit that Tate could ever be wrong. He got women to fall in love with him. Then he flew them out to Romania okay. and then he had them work like 15 hour shifts and then he stole money from them while he had them work. Um, they the got, they got a percentage though and he put them on. So that's like, yeah, but he lied, he lied about the percentage you gave him, right? Like he's on video talking about he, how he would scam them with their taxes to steal money from them. <laughs> tax is also another important element for controlling your woman. You're not going to pay anybody tax because you're getting paid in Bitcoin. You need to tell your girl that you're paying the tax because girls are lazy and girls are stupid. And girls don't understand how taxes work. And you're like, oh, okay, yeah, we've made this much money, but I'm gonna pay the tax to make sure we don't get in trouble. It allows you to pay her a smaller percent. So I used to pay my girls 30%. So for every $10,000 they made, I'd give them three and I'd keep seven. They thought they were on 50%. And I said that the disparity is because of taxes. If they say, why is it 50-50? I'm the one who knows what he's doing. I'm the one with the knowledge. I'm the da 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 Shut the f up, go online. Print out some tax forms. I used to do this all the time. I used to print out some random tax forms to say, yeah, sign here, sign this. What is it? It's for the tax. You want to pay the tax or not? Throw them away afterwards. But they, they think something's happening. Something real's happening. Nothing's happening besides me getting rich. Baby. I mean, he's a businessman. Almost like he was somehow hypnotized into being unable to form educated opinions. After receiving seven bans from Twitch, Aiden was negotiating with a new streaming platform called Kick. In essence, Kick is just Twitch, except with the added benefits of getting 95% revenue splits and relaxed terms of service. On top of that, Aiden was offered the biggest streaming deal ever, apparently in excess of 150 million US dollars. Obviously, Aiden soon moved to Kick, and it was after this that he went insane. One of the first things he did was break international copyright laws by streaming the entire Super Bowl 2023 on kick. If that wasn't bad enough, he then went on to stream the first page of the website full of adult content in front of his audience mostly composed of minors. Now, it cannot be denied Aiden has previously used his wealth selflessly to better the lives of others. But there's no presence without blessing all of you, so I'm giving all of you $10,000. Yeah, 10,000 for you, 10,000 for you, 10,000 for you. Happy birthday, bro. Turn around. It's yours. Model X. And the premise of this new genre is an innocent concept at its core, asking viewers to complete challenges for life-changing sums of money. Mr. Beast is widely praised for changing the lives of thousands of people with this type of content. In actuality, Aiden is also helping people in desperate need of money. However, most of the time, the challenges are far too evil to give credit to Aiden. For example, one viewer was asked to eat dog feces, while another viewer was challenged to splash his sleeping sister with pee. This was a challenge so extreme that even Kick couldn't host it. So after receiving messages from the high ups, Aiden told the viewer to instead splash a mixture of alcohol, mustard, coffee and tomato sauce on his sister before breaking her TV with a bat. It. 
one of his other challenges got a viewer fired from his job. Say that joke, you got on my comment tonight, you got fired in real life because the kids saw the clip. And, and showed his dad who I work with and it got to my boss. Okay, so where did you used to work at? I just worked in software testing. Sorry, where? And developing. Like software testing, like computer. But the saddest challenge can't even be put into words. Yo. God damn. Yo. <laughs> Yo. 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 At this point, Aiden was using people's financial desperation for his entertainment, inflicting pain and misery for no reason whatsoever. Due to everything he has done since moving to Kick, his old friends have turned their back on him. And despite his enormous view count, no one wants to collaborate with him anymore. Though he started off as a good person, he rose to fame so fast that he didn't have time to grow up. And due to this immaturity, he ended up surrounding himself with people who saw him as nothing more than a tool to be used. In the end, Chasing wealth and fame eventually led to Aiden Ross losing sight of his true self and becoming a person who no one can respect.